There's always a need for skills and socioeconomic development in rural areas. The Africa Foundation facilitates projects in rural communities by using two simple principles, community participation and local leadership. This leads to the empowerment and growth of rural communities. To talk to us today about the foundation and what they do, I have David Millard. He is the Chief Executive Officer from the Africa Foundation. David, good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning, Tobit. Thank you for inviting me. Tell us a bit more, what is the Africa Foundation and why was it started? Africa Foundation started about 20 years ago. In fact, this is our 20th anniversary. Um, it started out of the, the thinking that you can't have conservation uh, without the involvement of the, of the local communities. And I think that Africa, probably one of our greatest assets that we have in Africa is natural resources like conservation areas, our animals, because it generates a huge amount of investment, foreign investment in the form of tourism, uh, filming and things like that, people coming to South Africa and uh, it creates jobs. And that of course is all fed back into the conservation itself and into those communities. So the idea was really born out of a company called Conservation Africa, which is now called Anbeyond. And they in fact insisted that an independent trust be set up called the Africa Foundation, which would spearhead and drive all the social economic socioeconomic development around where they operated. Why is it important to empower communities, rural communities for that matter, by ensuring that uh, they learn how to conserve and preserve Africa's spectacular assets? I think that the, the, the lesson that has been learned is that, for example, things like checkbook charity, you know, just throwing money at communities has never worked. People don't take the ownership and accountability of that. But I think more importantly than that, our country needs leadership, good, strong leadership. And that comes with empowerment and leadership development. And that's where I think we've seen the benefits of that within the foundation and also on the conservation side, um, coming out of the work that we've done. What, what is your key focus area? Well, what are the areas that you, you focus in when you're dealing with rural communities? We have four focus areas, and uh, none of them more important than the others. Um, education, obviously, which covers the building of schools. Um, and also under education, we have a, a flagship program, which is called CLEF, the Community Leader Education Fund. That is a bursary program, uh, a bursary support program for young school leavers going into tertiary education. Uh, so we build schools, classrooms, and things like that. And then also under health, we've built clinics, extensions to clinics, and we've also financed quite a lot of work around um, orphans and vulnerable children, care centers for orphans and things like that. And then under environment, uh, we do community education lessons with children, uh, conservation lessons with children, also conservation debates, and also land rehabilitation programs. And then the fourth one, of course, is small business development. And there we concentrate on farmers and craft development around those communities where we operate. Now, you say you don't just throw money at the communities in which you operate. How, what is the model that you take to, to assist and support these communities? And how do you make sure that the projects that you picked become sustainable? Essentially, we approached, uh, people come to us. The, the communities have, as you know, in South Africa, we have community development forums, CDFs. And these are structured councils uh, supported by uh, Department of Social Development and Government. And what they do is they come to us and they, uh, they say, look, you know, they have this problem. We usually ask them to prioritize those problems in, in a scale of what is the most important and why. Sometimes that might need further investigation, perhaps with the Department of Education or whoever. But what we do is we eventually arrive at what we call a prioritized need. We then ask them, what are they doing about that problem? Because we're not going to go into a handout. So they then obviously show us or demonstrate to us what they've been trying to do to resolve that problem. We then join hands with them and bring in the government players, which would either be the Department of Education, district municipalities, local municipalities or whatever, and we take it forward as a partnership. So we are mere facilitators. Really, they have the ownership. Now, the community projects that have been successful in, in working with the Africa Foundation, what is it that you have identified in them and why did you pick them in particular? We picked them because of the leadership that was being shown by the communities. Um, if I can give you a, a really good example, Tabu, we had a, we had a, a community called Tlabakisa. It's in the northern Bushbuck Ridge district uh, on the border of the Manyaleti, Sabi Sands, uh, Kruger Park. Very, very remote community. And um, they would b they'd been after us for about two or three years asking us to come and help them with a high school. Why did they need a high school? 
Well, what we found was that their children were walking between, I think, 10 and 12 kilometers today to two local villages called Velferdint and Kluvakani. And on one of those walks about a year ago, one of the children was killed by an elephant. Now, you can imagine. I mean, it obviously, the community were very upset about that. They had a primary school which was built in 1963. And because they were largely comprised of Mozambican refugees, they were sort of left out of the development loop which was going on in Valfordint and Kluvakani, 10 k's away. So they came to us and they begged us to help them with the high school. We then engaged with education and uh, municipal structures and identified that they were prepared to come on board if we could find a donor. We then sent out a message to all our partners and asked, could we find a donor? And unbelievably, we found a donor who was prepared to put up almost 4 million rand out of his own pocket to, to build a high school. Mm. We started that high school development in September. 15th of September, I think it was, after all the negotiations. And in those negotiations, all the partners put the, their hands on the table and they said, this is what we can do. So Bushpark Ridge Municipality said, we'll level the land. Community said, we'll debush it. Department of Education said, they will supply teachers, principals, desks, books, etc. That school opened, the first 300 children were signed up, they were standing in queues. Now, that, that, that was a record for us. Even for us, that was, that was unbelievable. But it really just showed how the community joined hands with all the partners and just drove that process. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So, so that's a big well. one. We Thank you very well. much. Thank you very much for dropping by and uh, hope to speak to you again soon in some of your projects. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.